Welcome to CBS 19 Issues and Answers. I'm Brian Houston. We thank you for joining us. Cardiovascular diseases, including stroke, are our nation's number one killer, and the price of treating heart disease in the U.S. is expected to triple in the next 20 years. The American Heart Association says the cost will climb to more than $818 billion by 2030. Treating high blood pressure accounts for almost half of that. Doctors say lives and money can be saved if Americans are more vigilant about exercise and a good diet, starting with eating less salt. To urge Americans to join the battle against these diseases, since 1963, Congress has required the president to proclaim February American Heart Month. And in a few minutes, we're going to tell you about an event coming up later this month that will give East Texans a chance to help raise funds for research and education and pass along information about heart disease and stroke. And uh, we'll get to that event in just a minute. But first, we want to talk about the reason for American Heart Month. Deb Taylor, a registered nurse, is the Divisional Director of Cardiology for the Trinity Mother Francis Health System. And Deb, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Tell me, explain to me exactly what your position does. Well, I lead several teams for the healthcare system um, that focus on both diagnosing and treating heart disease. Okay, so uh, you're in charge. I am one of the people that are there to support all of the teams. <laughs> yes, Brian. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit from your perspective, dealing with it in your hospital, how bad is the problem of heart disease now? I mean, we see that the technology is better. There's more information out there now than ever before. Are we making a dent in this or is it just as bad or worse than it's ever been? Well, we are making a dent in it, Brian, but the problem is is that as our population ages and unfortunately as our lifestyles seem to uh, continue to get worse with more inactivity and um, eating more high-fat foods and, and larger portions, heart disease is becoming even more prevalent. Mm -hmm. How much of this is uh, directly related to obesity at this point, do you think? A lot. Uh, in fact, probably most of it. Um, and the good thing with that, though, is it's some there's something we can do about that. And that is change our lifestyles <laughs> it's all about uh, picking healthy lifestyles and um, and that goes from just little choices that we can make each and every day mm -hmm. what, what would you say is the most common thing you see uh, in, in the hospital when you're treating patients these days um, chest pain mm -hmm. angina um, high blood pressure mm -hmm. and congestive heart failure uh, is there any particular uh, common thing with the patients is it a particular age group is it a particular uh, 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 nationality, anything that is in common there? Well, unfortunately, it's not very selective. Um, we are all at risk from heart disease, um, but you start to see it become more prevalent um, kind of in, a, in the middle ages, mm -hmm. um, mid 50s to mid 60s. Um, we see the African American and the Hispanic population are at great risk because of a greater prevalence of high blood pressure and diabetes. Mm -hmm. And now, is that because of uh, diet or, or just their makeup. Some of it is genetic makeup okay. and then some of it is actually a lifestyle as well. Okay. Um, what are some of the warning signs that uh, that people need to be watching out for? Let's, I guess first of all talking about heart disease and heart attacks in general. Sure. Um, heart attacks if you start to feel uh, pressure in your chest or that heaviness, um, pain that might that you might feel in your jaw or go down your left arm or in your back, feeling winded or um, just overall weakness. Mm -hmm. Women will sometimes actually present a little bit differently. Um, sometimes women just feel weak and tired or actually have maybe an upset stomach or some indigestion. Okay. What about uh, the warning signs for something like stroke, though? Stroke is a little bit different. Stroke, you might have slurred speech or vision problems. You might feel weakness in one of your arms or your legs. What, what is the, um, the, the likelihood, once you've had a stroke now, being able to come back and, and, and have a, a full productive life? What's the recovery rate like nowadays? Well, it's all about catching it quickly, both if you're having a heart attack or a stroke. Mm -hmm. um, the sooner you um, access medical care, the greater chance you have a full recovery. Now, now, we see so much involved when we talk about heart disease, we just automatically think about heart attacks and stroke. What other kinds of things are you treating? 
Um, high blood pressure. Okay. Heart, high blood pressure is definitely considered Very heart common. disease. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, congestive heart failure, um, which is oftentimes a result of having a heart attack or having some sort of damage to your heart muscle. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also um, rhythm problems with the heart that we see pretty uh, frequently. How do you treat something like that? We have all sorts of different procedures. There's different medications. and uh, We actually can also do what's called electrophysiology procedures to help treat rhythm problems. That's kind of where you jump start the heart to get it back into rhythm? A little bit, right. <laughs> in right. my own medical way right. of putting things there like that? So, Definitely so. Yeah. Um, how many people have you got working in your teams there? Just kind of an approximation out there. Oh, working in our heart teams, uh, well over 400. Seriously? Absolutely, so yes. So that gives you an idea of how many patients uh -huh you're dealing with uh -huh. on a regular basis, oh, right? Yes. Any, any empty beds? Never. Never. Not in the <laughs> heart. Not in the heart area, no, right? Uh, no. No. In fact, we're we're growing our organization so that we can treat the heart disease here in East Texas. Wow! Incredible. All right, we're going to uh, take a time out. Uh, there is a website that gives you all the information you want to know about the uh, American Heart Association, East Texas. That's www.heart.org/tyler. That can give you information about what's going on. I also want to tell you that the 2011 Tyler Beatles Love Heart Ball is taking place on Saturday, February 19th at 7 o'clock until midnight at the Willowbrook Country Club. Uh, that's going to be taking place there. The tickets are $125 each, and that uh, the money raised there goes to the American Heart Association to help folks like Deb and the folks at uh, all the various hospitals here in East Texas to fight heart disease. And we'll come back and we'll talk more about heart disease with Deb Taylor in just a moment. All right, we're back here with Deb Taylor from uh, Trinity Mother Francis Health Systems. And uh, again, we appreciate her coming in to talk a little bit about uh, heart disease in East Texas. And uh, you, you talked a little bit about women and heart disease. What's going on uh, in that category these days? Well, we have work to do there, Brian. Um, one in three women will be affected by heart disease. And in fact, since 1984, more women than men have actually died from heart disease. Um, and another staggering statistic is that over 400,000 women will die from heart disease each year. Only about 42,000 die from breast cancer. Really? Right. So that really puts things in, pers in perspective that we've got work to do to increase awareness of women's heart disease. Uh, have those numbers jumped up recently or, or has it always been this way? It's actually always been this way. Uh, it's just that we're starting to recognize it and see it. What, what do you think are the causes uh, that would particularly make women susceptible to uh, that kind of heart disease rate? Well, it's it's our activity and our, our lifestyles. Um, and women have a tendency to present differently with heart disease, um, so it's not as um, always easily recognizable. Okay, so if, if uh, women are out there watching this, what kind of advice would you give them? Sure, um, to, to understand that number one, heart disease is their number one risk. And to understand as well that it will present differently oftentimes in them. They may not have the, the traditional elephant on the chest, chest pain that comes with a heart attack. Um, it really is much more subtle. Um, women sometimes just have weakness. Uh, they might feel a little bit of short of breath um, or have a little bit of indigestion. And oftentimes those are symptoms that you might try to ignore. Mm -hmm. um, so when those things happen, it's it's really, really important to seek out health care immediately. One of the things that uh, the Coleman uh, organization has done a really good job of is to uh, is a lot of preventive uh, things, you know, self breast exams, things like mm -hmm. that. What kind of things do you advise for a, a woman, for anyone out there, in terms of uh, constantly kind of monitoring your health to to ward this off before it hits you? Is right. that possible? Absolutely, it is. It's all about uh, lifestyles. Okay. Um, and you're right. The Komen Foundation has done an amazing job of getting the word out there and, and helping women learn about their risk for breast cancer. The Heart Association is working on that as well with the red dress. And you might see that I have a red dress yeah. pin on, on my lapel. And in fact, Friday, February the 4th, is Go Red Day, um, okay. a national day that we recognize awareness for women's heart disease. Um, so it's just a day to get the word out there, help women know that that's our number one risk, and um, to teach people about the fact that we have total control if we monitor our weight and our blood pressure, our cholesterol, eat a healthy diet, um, and get out there and be really active. These are all lifestyle things 
that we can choose to do to prevent heart disease. How often should a person go in for a checkup just to uh, just to kind of keep an eye on things and get those numbers checked? Right, it's recommended usually annually to okay. go see your doctor and have your blood pressure checked, get your weight checked, um, have your cholesterol levels checked. Now, how effective uh, is the American Heart Association in terms of helping to get these this information out? Extremely. Um, the American Heart Association has a robust website. They have tracking tools that you can actually use um, their website to track all of your numbers. They've got all sorts of different programs. The START program, which is to guide walking and, and healthy lifestyles. There's a lot of great programs within the American Heart Association. Okay, outstanding. And, and, and as far as the uh, heart uh, gala that's coming up here, how is that money used? How does that help you guys in the work that you do? Right, the money that's raised for that event and for all the events that the American Heart Association sponsors is thrown right back into research and to developing these great programs that they give us to help monitor our health. Okay, final uh, last uh, word here as far as uh, giving people advice on what they need to be doing to take care of themselves. Anything that you want right. to throw out there? So February is National Heart Month. Um, it's this, this is the month to increase awareness of heart disease being our number one risk. So I say use this time to get out there and know your numbers. Okay. All right, very good. Deb Taylor, again, a registered nurse. She is with the uh, she is the divisional director of cardiology for Trinity Mother Francis Health System. Thank you very much, Deb, for coming in and Thanks sharing some me. info with us. We appreciate that. Thank you for wearing <laughs> the red dress as well to mm -hmm. kind of get that word out as, as well. The website again for the American Heart Association of East Texas is heart.org slash Tyler. And again, the Heart uh, Gala, the 2011 Tyler Beatles Love Heart Ball is coming up Saturday. February 19th at 7 o'clock until midnight at Willowbrook Country Club in Tyler. Tickets $125 each for a great cause, of course, to benefit the American Heart Association. You can find out ticket information at AmericanHeart.org slash Tyler, Texas Heart Ball. All right, Deb, thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Brian. When we come back, we're going to talk specifically about the Heart Gala with a couple of the ladies who are in charge of putting this thing together. Back in just a moment on Issues and Answers.